up. Ish. Yeah, sort of. <clears throat> All right. So welcome, tech heads, to episode 38 of A Week in Technology. Holy bananas. Yep. It is super awesome now. Yep, it is pretty awesome. That's the way we roll. Alrighty, so the epi- or episodes, articles for this week. Uh, gaming news: uh, Microsoft officially kills production of the Xbox 360. Uh, Rocket League is a free Steam weekend plus a sale. Uh, hardware news: We have Corsair sets warranties for select PSUs to ten years. Uh, Steel Series Apex M500 mechanical keyboard goes back to basics. Uh, G Skill Trident Z RAM fast and low latency. Uh, HTC Vive doesn't support Linux yet, but they said, or like they said it would on launch day, it's not going to do that. Uh, for tech news, we have experts crack the latest robust ransomware that we talked about in previous shows. Uh, free Google Internet is leaving Kansas. Uh, Microsoft adds QR codes to the blue screen of deaths in new update. Logitech buys Jaybird for only fi- 50 million cash. I figured it'd be more than that, but I guess they're not doing as good as I thought they were. Uh, yeah. Android <laughs> and Dev Preview to feature or two features Vulcan and Intel cutting 12,000 jobs. So yeah. Yep. Uh, this is probably going to be a relatively quick show this time. It's not going to be three hours like the last one. Hopefully um, not. Yeah, I got some other things that I got to take care of before tomorrow. So, Indeed. I don't want it to be like ridiculously long. All right, so let's go ahead and just For jump sure. right into the uh, first article here, which is Microsoft killing off Xbox 360. Uh, which needed to happen. I mean, really. Mm-hmm. As uh, an older platform, I mean, they've supported for twelve years or ten years. I mean, years, does Sony so. still make PS3s? I think so. Do they? Yeah. I mean, they. I, support mean, I see about, them on the shelf, but I don't know if that's new production or just like shit that's left over. Unless they made like they had ridiculous production numbers, which I doubt they did. It's still new. I think they're still running it. I think they committed to, um, I think, what was the PS2 they had around for 12 years or something like that. So I don't expect it to go that long. But, I mean, <clears throat> the 360 yeah. did come out after the PS3, though, didn't it? No, I think the 360 was first. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I figured they'd give it 10 years, just like the Xbox. Uh, I think that, um, you know, life span of a console is pretty good. It's actually really good if you think about like uh the games that the xbox 360 started on what they ended on i mean it's yeah. ridiculous that the lifespan of that console on <clears throat> the fidelity of games how it's it's expansively grown so mm-hmm. um getting 10 years at a console is ridiculous so i'll say it yeah so i don't expect like the ps uh um four and the xbox one to stick around that long. long yeah, yeah. figure five years which they're coming up on pretty soon, actually. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, three years old now? But that's also the uh, um, the talks of the whole PS4.5 or whatever yeah. that everybody's talking about. But basically, all that's going to be is just, uh, it's just uh, the sup- refresh, supposed just like the 4K. The, slim, the PS2 uh, uh, yeah. slim, PS3 slim, and stuff like that. So it's they, not like they, a, a new They claim 4K console. gaming, but that ain't going to happen. I'm it's sorry. just going to be... It's going to uh, support 4K displays. That's all it's going to be. So it's going to upscale everything to 4K. So you're going to so. upscale 900p to 4K. Mm-hmm. So it just runs at the at the native resolution of your 4K display, which you get a better image when you do that. So, I mean, most 4K mm. displays probably up. Um, I don't know, man. Did it anyways. So I don't think taking a 900p game and... Scaling it up to a 4K screen would look very good, in my opinion. I don't know, but whatever. No, it's like the 
if you run it at the native resolution, it's a lot better. So text and stuff like in 1080p in the menu options, you know, you're upscaling that to 10. Well, see, that's 10. what I wonder though, is because I mean, it's even not the best quality, you lose even Windows it. 10 hasn't even gotten their shit together about scaling the OS scaling to 4K properly. I don't know about that. Yeah, people complain about it all the time that it like scales what? horribly. Like everything's fucking super small. Like there's no scaling. There's no proper scaling for the OS. It looks like shit. Like things don't like box like uh, menu screens and everything else or whatever. Like nothing is scales properly with 4K screens. I mean, I don't see what there is to scale. I don't know either. I don't know what the hell they're talking I about. Mean, I don't have a 4K screen, so the only thing I could think of is uh, you have a 30-inch monitor and it's a 4K display, you know, and then <clears throat> this menu is only X size. Like the the text and stuff doesn't get larger. Because that'd be stupid if you want to high, run a higher resolution. Yeah, I, I don't think, know what I they're talking about. I just know that their... people, pro- professionals or whatever, expert people, always cl- complain that it doesn't scale properly um, for 4K screens. So I don't know what the hell that means. Because I yeah. don't care. I don't have 4K. So yeah, I think they're just uh, retards, basically. I mean, because it's like same thing if you have run uh, like back okay. in the CRT days. I don't know how you would say that somebody's a retard whenever they've been studying this stuff for decades, but I mean they have to be. I mean I don't understand what the scaling is that they're talking about. I don't either because I don't look into want. it because I don't care. Okay. But there's some there's something that it, I'm just saying Linus all the big name people complain about the OS scaling with 4K screens. Like all the time. I don't know what that means. I don't know what the scaling is. I don't know what they're getting mad about. Obviously, if you have a 27 or a 30 inch screen with 4K, everything's going to be so tiny that it's fucking pointless. I think that's, that's why what I think. About, which means they're fucking retards. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, then I guess they would be, but that makes no sense. Then that means every it debunks every other fucking thing that they've ever done on their channel because they're dumb. So, I mean, if they don't understand how 4K works, then they're pretty fucking retarded. And well, I don't understand how resolution works. I mean, I don't see what they're trying to I don't to see happen. how there's there's no way in hell that these people that have been doing this shit for that long don't understand what res- how resolution works. They're I just, just think, complaining about it. But that's the thing, though. That's why I think 4K is fucking pointless. I think 4K is completely pointless except for maybe movie watching on a big-ass TV. I mean, I think 4K on a monitor is dumb. I, I've seen personally Windows 10 on four on a 4K like th- I think it was like a 30, was it a 32 or a 37 inch <clears throat> monitor 4K or whatever, and the fucking text and everything was so small it was pointless. Yeah, it's like what? Why even do that? It's so dumb. It was unusable. That's the only whatever. thing I could do, uh, do is just increase text size. For menus and stuff but the reason you run 4k is for higher pixel count which increases the fidelity so i mean but that's always been like that since forever yeah i don't know i don't know what they're talking about because <clears throat> i remember back in the day having a like a 1600 mm-hmm. by 9 or 1200 monitor or whatever and everything be super small you know a small 19 inch or whatever is the same thing way back in the day same thing as today. I mean, unless they want that to auto scale text size and stuff, which that's kind of dumb. Don't know. <clears throat> so anyway, I guess you'll still be able to play. We're going on a tangent, like always. Um, Xbox 360 games, of course, you'll be able to play on Xbox One. I don't like how they say that because not all Xbox 360 games play on the Xbox One. But yeah. I think a vast majority of them. It's do. kind of a very uh, broad, shitty way of putting that, but I think it's like only like half the library even works right now. If you still want to play Xbox 360 stuff, have an Xbox 360. Yeah, but a lot of people sold their 360s to buy, which we do all the time. But that's the beauty of PCs because it doesn't fucking matter. Because <laughs> yeah, you're not changing the, the OS, you're just changing the hardware. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, I guess. In some aspects, like some older games have compatibility problems with newer, like Windows 7 and 8 and 10 and stuff like that. So in that aspect, it's the same, but who cares, man? Grow up. Yep. If you want to play your old games, keep your old console. Just yep. like if you want to play some old games on the PC, you still have a Windows XP boot or something like that. 
didn't put this one in this one in the article all right i guess you just linked it straight to the steam page yeah pretty much <laughs> awesome all right so apparently rocket league is free to play for this weekend and it's on sale for 12 bucks yeah it's on sale for 40 percent off so 36 dollars for a four pack yeah you can play it see Dude, if you this like game it is so much fun i think i might play it now this weekend yeah no i, I want to play it but i gotta buy a controller because playing on keyboard and mouse will suck so I might play it and buy it this weekend. Well, I'll definitely play it this weekend, install it and play. Try it out with the keyboard and mouse, but definitely it's probably have to get gonna a controller. Suck. Oh, I'm sure it is. I know it is. So but yeah, it's a it's a lot of fun. So a we're lot a little of crazy stuff. Yeah, a little let on gaming news. I figured I'd throw something in there. Yeah, I, yeah. But yeah, so play for free this weekend. Plug in your controller, have some fun, and. Uh, Score some not much of a ga- it's not really much of a gaming stream anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, we gotta have this is pretty games. important though because it's a damn awesome game, and these these dudes like freaking deserve every little bit of indeed. Every it's little supposedly come out with like a get. basketball mode, which would be weird. You like shoot hoops? Yeah, that's awesome actually. I'd be I like, could, I could see me playing a lot that of quite. A you have to like, stuff. yeah, you have to jump up and bump it to get it to go up yeah. and work in. That's awesome. It's got to be like something else to like pop the ball up or something, or maybe the ball would just bounce instead of roll or yeah. something. Well, have like, no, a, the ball always bounces. The ball hardly ever rolls in that game. Oh. You're always in the air on that game. Yeah. If you don't know how to do aerials, you get wrecked so fast. Indeed. So, but yeah. All right. So anyway, on to the hardware bit because like we said the gaming news is a little bit light this week mm-hmm. um i didn't look too much into the gaming stuff because i haven't exactly really just steps last week's but yeah it is technically last week's stuff but Sorry. whatevs it yeah. don't matter <laughs> <clears throat> it's it, it might be news to someone exactly so, so. all right but, well yeah. so corsair, corsair has decided to extend their seven-year warranties out to 10 years on select PSUs. These models are the AXI, HXI, RMI, and the RMX series. Um, EVGA is the only other brand that offers a 10-year warranty, and of course that's on only select ones, most likely the more expensive ones. Um, Others are sitting around only five (laughs) years... Sitting around <laughs> five years, uh, Corsair stated that customers won't have to do anything um, to get the extra years. It will come to those models automatically, and it will include future sales as well as already sold PSUs. So if you own one of these series PSUs and you just bought it like maybe five, six, seven, eight, whatever months ago, um, you'll automatically just get those extra three years. Or if you years, bought so. it two years ago, doesn't yeah. matter. You know, as long as you have these series, the you know the upper end series, which I highly recommend. Um, spending some money and getting a good PSU because yes. something you just buy it and forget about it but you know you can use the same PSU if you get a you know decent wattage one you know go a little bit overkill um, for you know future upgrades you can have a PSU for like for 10 years I mean there's a warranty for 10 years so it's expected to last 10 years I think the warranty before was seven years so yeah um, <clears throat> like I said I mean that's two or three builds if you build every you know, a couple of years and just spend the extra money. Yeah. You know, it's an extra 50, hundred bucks or whatever, but, um, it's well worth it. You PSU know? goes wrong. It can fuck your whole system. Exactly. So. <laughs> definitely. Definitely don't cheap out on the PSU. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's good that they're offering these long warranties, especially, I mean, like I said, my PSU, let's see, I changed it out. I have a Corsair unit now. Um, I'm trying to think why I changed it out. Oh, that's why I sold my uh, system to my sister. So, um, oh yeah, we're at the seven eighty. You got the new. You got the new PSU. Um, whenever you built the, f- yeah, X ninety nine twenty X. Yeah, X ninety nine. No, no, no. I think I got it. No. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. You bought it for that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Because my yeah, I gave my old you... PSU. My old. I have old. Uh, Thermotake, I think seven hundred and fifty watt or something like that. I mean that thing's. That thing's pretty old. But, yeah. like I said, still kicking. I mean, that thing's got to be... For the most part, they're pretty years old. Proof. I mean, for the yeah. most part. So yeah, as, as long as you get a you quality clean, unit, they you get use quality, quality components and stuff like that. So that's why mm-hmm. I say, you know, spend a little bit extra. And then, like I said, it'll last you forever. So the next time, like I said, I'm, you know, 
I had that one for seven years. It went through. I think I bought it with uh, um, my Core Two Quad, the um, three point six, or it was. Uh, Q6600? Q6600. Yeah. yeah. I bought it with that system when I built that forever ago. I think that was 2011. Maybe. No, that was sooner than that. I think that was when I built it in 2007 when I got back into uh, PC gaming and stuff. So <clears throat> I had that up until I upgraded and had, uh, <laughs> I think, the, I had a 8800 GT graphics card. Damn, so that's you been know. almost 10 years ago. It would still be under warranty if it was one of these. Yeah, no, it was only it was Thermaltake, so I think they had a yeah, five-year no. warranty or something. But, well, I'm sure. Um, Probably even three. <clears throat> maybe. But, like I said, I mean, that thing went all the way up to, I had a uh, running on it before I sold it. I had i7 4790K running at like 4.6 gigahertz, uh, 780 GTX, you know, so it was still running perfect. No problems. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I think I'm still on my Seasonic 750 watt, mm -hmm. or maybe it's only 700. And I think it's 750. Yeah, I figured that that's pretty good for a good enthusiast build because then you should be covered on most graphics cards that come out because they mm -hmm. figure about five to six hundred watts um, they recommend for power supplies for the upper end. So you should be okay unless things go crazy. But then, like I said, you can upgrade <laughs> if you need to. But yeah, I mean, it's what 200 bucks, 150 bucks. And it lasts 10 years, that's cheap. Yeah. Especially, yeah, because then you don't have to worry about... And to you know, guarantee or a ho hopefully guarantee, you have run less risk of frying out the other $1,200 in components. Exactly, yeah, because I've had that happen before on cheaper computers I've built for people. Um, you know, just they're really budget limited, a couple hundred dollars. So mm -hmm. buy a case and PSU combo with some garbage PSU in it. It lasts a couple of years, but... <clears throat> it died and it fried the board and everything like that. So fried the board and could possibly fry the RAM. <clears throat> so yeah, buy a good power supply. Don't cheap out on that for sure. Yeah, like I said, the manufacturers are doing it. You know, ten year warranty on the Corsair units. So yeah, <clears throat> that's crazy. Yeah, you have the manufacturer backing in case something goes wrong. So definitely do it up. All right, so. On to the next one. Steel Series Apex M500 keyboard goes back to basics. So um, I like it. I like uh, it a lot. Clean, basic, full-size blue LED backlit <laughs> mechanical keyboard. With uh, so far, they're only announcing it with uh, Cherry MX red switches. Uh, no futuristic styling and no over-the-top RGB. Uh, though it does seem to be a little priced a little high at a hundred bucks for being bare bones. But uh, good. Yeah. I mean, hell, my. Um, have it here. The quick fire rapid that I bought or whatever, that thing was like eighty dollars in itself and it was it was a ten keyless. So it had less keys. So now nah, ten keyless is awesome, but um uh, full keyboard. Okay. Subjective, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Um but anyway, so yeah, it's just a pretty uh, you know, pretty badass little keyboard here. And if they're anything like their their you know, mice and everything, they're it's it's built good, so mm -hmm. um Definitely good build quality and everything like that being still serious. Yeah. So, so I like it. It's just a plain, simple design. So I, I really just, like it. It just looks old school, but it has backlighting. I wish the backlighting was red, but blue's okay, I guess. Yeah, that's where you need the RGB and just change it whatever you want. But blue works with mine because, I, like yeah, I said, I was but... thinking about it. I was like, man, I've had my case for since 2007 as well. 2000, it, it was like December of 2007, so let's just call it 2008. <clears throat> but yeah, my Antec 900 with the uh, the blue mm. LED fans, so it worked good with my system. But yeah, I, I want RGB so I can do it up. That's another thing you can Word. spend a little bit of money on. But that's more design wise, so style has change cases uh, like spending cases, good money yeah. on a case. Yeah, <clears throat> good solid uh, solid sturdy case. Yeah, that I love my decent. 440. That thing, I mean, like whenever I did the PC cleaning video or whatever, I like opened it up expecting to see it kind of looking like shit because uh, it was like seven, eight months that I hadn't freaking cleaned out my computer mm -hmm. and it sits right next to the damn dog all day long and all night long. So I was like, oh man, this thing's going to be so nasty inside so I can show a good, you know, before and after or whatever. There's like nothing in there. <laughs> I was like, it's like I've never been so bummed to have a clean computer. <laughs> Indeed. Like, That's damn. one thing. Yeah, you get a good case that has, you know, pre-filters and stuff like yeah. that. The filters no. were fucking nasty. Yeah. The computer inside was spotless. 
Yeah, that's, that's, that's one much. tip on, for people building computers. Get a case with um, filters and then run positive pressure in the case. More intake fans than the exhaust fans. So yeah. that way it doesn't pull in from outside the filters. <clears throat> there you go. Pro tips, yo. Indeed. All right, so on to the next one. <coughs> G Skill Trident Z 16 gigabit kit pairs DDR4 3600 speed with low latency. So, this one here um, says uh, there are two 8 gigabyte DIMMs instead of the four 4 gigabyte DIMMs, which you, most DDR4 RAM seems to be coming in, anyways, like the smaller DIMMs, but more of them. <coughs> um, so, the timings are 15, a lot 15, of like 15, 15, 15, 15, 12 channels. So, or, yeah. Or, or was it? No, it's six. I had a look. Yeah, it is. It is four channel, isn't yeah. it? I can't even remember. But it's four by. You know, you want the four sticks on the X ninety nine, but the uh, the newer Z. Man, I can't even remember what it Z one seventy. Yeah, one seventy, one ninety, whatever it is. One seventy. <clears throat> yeah, they. Uh, Z one seventy boards two are channel. more two channel. Yeah, it, so whereas this the X ninety nine is for it, quad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so uh it's at one what is it 1.35 volts um but they said that it's uh expected to be pricey um as their 16 gigabyte 36 ram with the 16 16 16 36 timings are sitting around 155 155 dollars now so this might be a little bit more than that but um i, I find it funny that they call it pricey because i paid like 270 something or 260 something for my 16 gigs of ram well that was Right when, right when it came out. out. That's what I'm saying, though. I just find it funny that they call it pricey. Because <laughs> <laughs> like mine was like almost twice that. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at mine now because I was curious what my clocks are. Oh, mine actually. What? Why is DRAM frequency so low? Huh. Well, I think mine running at 2400. Right? No, it can't be. Hang on one second. Yeah, it probably is. Huh. No, it's twenty one thirty three. That's what my fifteen. Yeah, but my where my hat, my memory SPD. I'm trying to look up mine right now. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. Anyways, I thought I had turned my RAM up. I guess maybe I turned it down on stability testing and never turned it back up. But yeah, no, mine's only oh, twenty one thirty three at fifteen fifteen. 28 timing currently right now so god dang ddr4 ram is so cheap now Mm -hmm. holy crap yeah this is 3600 at the same timings i'm running it at 2133 so some good ram that'll give you a couple hundred yeah because mine's 2400 and it has the same timings as this but it's running at 1.2 volts versus 1.35 but what the dude how do i see what i paid you gotta go. um invoice yeah go invoicing invoice. <clears throat> but yeah my ram i think okay i, I paid their kit but it's 2400 same timings Jesus but 1.35 volts as well i paid 220 dollars for my 16 gigs yeah and you want to know how much it is now the exact ram that i have how bucks. much 100 69.99 because i think i paid 100 dollars for mine I think it was so sixty nine ninety nine. I might buy another sixteen gigs of RAM. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why the hell not? <laughs> Indeed. But no, it's already four four gigabytes. So I wouldn't be able to do that. You can. You have eight yeah. eight memory slots. Do I? Yeah, because it's a quad channel. Oh, that's right. So I did that so you could have Dang, run yeah. thirty two gigs would be so awesome. Four on each side. Dude, guess how much? How, how much did you pay for your motherboard? One hundred and thirty bucks. But that was with all the rebates. It was like yeah. it was on sale for like 150 bucks and the 50 dollar mail in rebate. Want to know how much I paid for mine? <clears throat> uh, probably 250. Oh, yeah, you got you got you got a good motherboard when they first came out. So it had yeah. been like 350, 300 bucks. No, it was closer. Yeah, closer to 300. It was 285. That's not too bad because I bet you that board still costs. You know. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Let me see what it costs now. I'm gonna cry. 
I think I'm two seventy five. So yeah. it's only it's so only good mo- ten dollars motherboard more. still. Unless until they come like the a new platform comes out, they'll still be really good. So which I'm very curious about these uh <clears throat> I can't even remember the numbers, fifty eight hundreds or whatever they are. The Broadwell E's. So if yeah. they'll have a, a um refresh of the motherboard or just uh <clears throat> a refresh of the chipset change to like I don't know x 99 a or something or if at all just be uh <laughs> i'm surprised the 5820k so. hasn't came down in price to be honest but i guess it has no reason to <clears throat> exactly it's, i paid 390 and it's still 390 mm-hmm. so i wish we had a micro center man that uh I paid 120 for my case that's not too bad no nah, that's for a good case you're gonna look into spend 100 to 150 bucks so yeah I think that's really it that i got yeah all my parts i mean other than the, the 970s mm-hmm. but yeah no this is 3600 ram though with low latency timings like i wonder what the i'm gonna check to see what 700 dollars for the two 970s 970s baby and they're just as good as your single 980 ti um new egg on keyboard Right. I can't believe how cheap the RAM has gotten, though. Holy That's how it hell, always is, man. though. I, well, I know that, but still, it's just it's yeah. it's mind blowing. Yeah, because it was only a year ago when it was the first DDR. Same thing came out with DDR three. I mean, it was super expensive when it came out, but now it's super cheap. All right. Hell, the, no, but the DDR four is almost on par with the DDR three. Like DDR three isn't that yeah. much cheaper. Like I mean, it's not like it's like ten dollars <laughs> for sixteen gigabytes or something. It's not. No, but it was when it first came out. No, no, I'm talking about DDR three. Like now, it's not that cheap. I know DDR three was expensive when it first came out. That's technology. I mean, the yeah. first time anything new comes out, it's expensive. All right, I am completely retarded on navigating new X site. It's been so long since I've been here. I wonder how much this is now. Man, I paid complete. 130 for my CPU cooler. Components, that's why. I'm looking at computer systems. I couldn't find it. I'm what retar- is it now? 119? <laughs> SSDs, look how much they, how cheap they've gone. Same thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I know that. I know how all that works, but it's just, wow. Crazy. There's a big gap. Dude, I can't believe I've had these Acer monitors for two years, or almost three or three years already. Mm-hmm. It's time for her to get new monitors. So, yeah, currently it's 16, 18, 18, 38 <clears throat> is the timings for 3,400. So... Oh, this is thirty six hundred even. I paid wow. five <clears throat> five fifty for my six eighty. It's not bad. Only a two gigabyte card. <laughs> really? Weak sauce, yeah. Wow. Six eighty was only a two gigabyte. What was the uh, the seven eighty was, was two three gigs? Three gigs, yeah. So okay. not bad, not bad. Yeah. And then the 970s, but the, the 680 was the first expensive graphics card I ever bought, like top yeah. of the line one. I was like, oh the, man, the 460 before yeah. that, and then the 98 GT, 9800 GT, or whatever was the very first video card I ever had. You had a uh, nine or 8600 GT, no, I didn't, yeah, no, it was 9600, not 8600, maybe 9600. It was 9600, yeah. <laughs> 9, I know it was a 9000 series, yeah, so 9600. So Let's see. Like, when, that was two thousand eight. Let me see. Because it was whenever uh, Cameron, right after Cameron was born. Mm-hmm. Yep, ninety six hundred GT baby, five hundred twelve megabytes of VRAM. How much was that thing? How much did I pay for that? <laughs> it's like one hundred and fifty oh bucks, probably. One hundred and ten dollars. Not too bad. Your dad's still rocking. My that motherboard thing. was was almost more. Actually, no, it's sitting down here. Oh yeah, he has now? my 460 now. Oh okay. Yeah, Cameron right. has the 680. <laughs> like an eight year old with a 680 <laughs> and a Sandy Bridge and eight gigs of RAM. <sighs> hey man, that Sandy Bridge is a beast. Oh, he's got the yeah. I need to I need to OC that bad boy. 
That thing will run. God, I paid $81 for four gigabytes of DDR2. DDR2? Oh. <laughs> Not even three. Yeah. <laughs> OCZ Titanium, baby. Yep. And I paid $89 for my Intel Pentium E5200 Wolfdale dual core. That's a beast, man. Yeah, I can't remember if we overclocked yours or not. Yeah, my, my sister's bit. overclocked a little bit. I think I ran at like 2.8 gigs. So I think it was 2.8 gigahertz. I think I ran my sister's with the stock Intel <laughs> like 3.0. <laughs> well, we had a 320 gigabyte hard drive in it. Mm-hmm. Wait. I mean, games weren't 50 gigs back then. I can't be right. Because it says it's a notebook hard drive. Oh, you probably bought that for your PS3. Yes. 720 2.5. RPM. 2.5 inch notebook hard drive, yeah. Mm-hmm. God, I paid $92 for that. You know, I bought one and never Ouch. installed it. Is this it? Where is it? Yeah. There's the one I bought. 500 gigabyte Western Digital Black. That's what I bought for my main rig. Six gig, three hundred and twenty gig, seventy two hundred RPM drive. I bought nice. it for my PS two or PS three. Actually I bought it for my laptop. And then my laptop had a eighty gig seventy two hundred RPM drive. I was gonna replace um the drive in the PS three. I had eighty gig PS three, but it was only fifty four hundred RPM or maybe even forty eight hundred or whatever they came with. Super cheap drives, but I never did. So I just put that in my old laptop, but then, like I said, my old a long time ago, my old laptop died yeah. because my cat threw the charger into the thing, which I wonder if I can open the thing up and fix it, because maybe I should do that and put Linux on it or something. So two years I rocked that other computer, and then I upgraded. And I, upgr- <laughs> I upgraded. Oh, your dad has to... that computer. Yeah. The, not the i5-750? Yep, so he's rocking the i5-750, the GTX 460. Eight gigs of RAM, um, maybe. Firepower Mod Extreme Pro 700-watt power supply. Um, <laughs> OCZ Reaper HPC 4 gigabytes of uh, DDR3. I thought you bought another 4, though, because I thought you had 8 in that system. No, I only had 4. Wow. What a noob. God, the GTX 460 was 240. Yeah. The motherboard, yeah, <laughs> motherboard was 150. Mm-hmm. The EVGA P55LE. <laughs> Damn. Good times, man. Indeed. And the Antec 600 case that Cameron's still rocking. <laughs> yeah. Man, I want to build another computer so bad. Yeah. I want to do like a sweet ass like water cooled build with like individually sleeved cables and just make it look yeah. super sexy, but it's so much that. money. Yeah. So much money. It just, it's just like it's not even really worth the money. That's the thing. Yeah, cuz especially, I mean, with our setups, it's not like we'd display it. We'd hide it behind the monitors or something. Yeah. It would be on the floor where you wouldn't see it. So. Mm-hmm. Bless you. Please, but <clears throat> all right, let's go to... ahead and move on to the next one. All right, so the HTC Vive and Valve Steam VR don't yet support <laughs> Linux and Steam OS. What? Don't worry about that message. What? Nothing. That message. Yeah, I accidentally pasted the link into. Uh... Oh, I snoozed hey, the notes. notifications for two hours, so that way it didn't pop up on the stream. <laughs> All right, so the original HTC and Valve planned for day one Linux support, but that is not the case. Uh, Valve is, of course, staying quiet like they always do. Uh, a Steam OS developer um, just said, we are working on Steam VR for Steam OS, but it's not ready yet. Uh, HTC Vive uh, will most likely be working on Linux long before the Oculus is, though, because whenever they asked, um, what is his name, Lucky or something like that? <laughs> What's his name? The Oculus guy? I have no idea who the Oculus guy is, to be honest. I'm not into Lucky or something stuff. like that. I can't remember his name. <clears throat> 
Anyway, Facebook um, guy. That's all I know. Because Facebook. No, not uh, not. Yeah, no, it's not uh, Zuckerberg. It's like something uh, lucky. Palmer Lucky. There it is. Palmer Lucky or whatever. Um, basically, uh, talked publicly about why Linux support was postponed for the Rift and what the future might hold. So he had talked about it in the past, unlike Steam or unlike Valve did and explained why it's taking so much longer but i don't know why they said because i didn't go to look at it but mm -hmm. oculus isn't coming out on on linux anytime soon and uh the vive is looking like it should be there sooner but even it's going to be out yeah much later i mean obviously so not out day one if you're so. linux and you like vr too bad install windows install windows and have fun like I mean, like the the is my computer even ready for VR for Linux isn't even available. So I mean, there's like nothing for it that's yeah. even come out. So if you In want time. VR and you have Linux, install Windows and have fun. Though I don't know. Oh man, I just closed that next window. Hang on, history. All right. So that's it for the hardware stuff. Now we'll just go on to regular tech news. Um, but. Basically, um, I was like super pumped about this uh, last week whenever I wrote all the notes for it. And I wrote the notes on this one specifically like a half an hour or so before. Or maybe it was like an hour or so before we were going to do the, the uh, show. Because mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot to it. And now I don't fucking care anymore. <laughs> so I'm just going to be honest and straight up right now. <laughs> I don't care. So um, if you want to read into it and get more data out of this one, go right ahead. Because it goes into like some crazy serious details and shit so mm -hmm. the gist is is that that ransomware petia or however you say that word uh it was the it was so bad because i guess it performed a fake check disk and would end up encrypting the um your actual master boot record of your computer so basically your machine was completely useless and um and so the whole drive yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, it went into mm. yeah, straight into the, the nor normally. Boot, well, I know, like the one that the one that Kenny got or whatever. It didn't go. It didn't start at the master boot record. You yeah, can still get into the level. computer and do stuff. So mm -hmm. this here is your your eft. So um, basically, they found uh, um, a way. There's, uh, I guess, uh, some software that you need to download if you have this problem, and it all. Um, it all happens by uh, taking the drive out of the infected computer and plugging it in to another computer as like a second hard drive kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then you can run one program, but you also need another program to basically wipe the shit out and take care of it. And it basically what it does is it um, will in, uh, generate, it get, makes like a key generator. I don't know if anybody's ever fired at anything before but um it makes a key generator to Fire. to um break the uh encryption and gives you the encryption key to unlock your crap yeah so, so if if you're unfortunate and this happens to you someone bested the malware people and made it so they you gave them a, a big f you yeah so you can uh fix your drive for free you don't have to pay them you don't have to pay them money but I'm undone. So yeah, I guess there was a uh, specific sectors of the hard drive or whatever that. that has um, <clears throat> the encryption file, and they can take that and read the data off it. And, and with that data, they can generate the the key, or you know, they figured out the algorithm of their uh, right. encryption. So and they're going to change it. But how long this will work, I don't know. Cause yeah, if you if you have gotten if you got it whenever this shit happened and. For whatever reason, you didn't format your hard drive because it wasn't that important to you, and you were hoping that a fix came along. Mm -hmm. Here you go. This is yeah. your fix. But so, uh, most likely, okay. now that this is out, they're going to yeah. be like, "Oh, well, they'll that's the problem." They'll change it, and then they'll come back out and, and f you again. Yeah. <laughs> so, but offense will do. always be ahead of defense. Exactly. Plain and simple. Yeah. Always be proactive instead of reactive. Yep. But this is something that you couldn't really help, though. I mean, other than like having an ad block, because this was like coming from like, this was coming from the advertising on like big name sites, like oh, New like York. This one was. Yeah, this is the one that had it. Oh. This is the one that caused all those problems that we talked about in the one show that we had, or whatever the malvertising thing, or whatever. And it, like, well, that was just 
regular malware. I don't think it was ransomware like this. No, this it, was, is, it was it was it was installing ransomware. Yeah, it yeah. was installing ransomware on people's computers through the advertising and shit on like New York Times and AOL and I mean just like loads of freaking big name sites. BBC America, I think, was one of them, or BBC or something. I mean, it was just it was bad. So a lot of people were it hit definitely by it, would be uh, a lawsuit, I think, for that. And, yeah. uh, you know, search for it. I'm sure that's a class action lawsuit. Jump on it and get some free money or have them fix yeah. your shit. You'll so, get like five bucks. Five bucks is better than nothing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Class action lawsuits are funny. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Class actions. Yep. Just makes the lawyers rich. But if we can set a precedent yep. for it, which if it's something this serious, that definitely would be. All right, so as it says here, the free ride is over for Google Fiber subscribers in um, uh, Kansas. So Google Fiber launched back in July 2012. The free service is no longer available in Kansas. Which I didn't even know they had this free service. It's just oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that was the big deal is everybody was like, even the free service is, you know, decent for people that, you know, just use regular crap. So, I mean, you had to pay for the the $300 construction fee or whatever, but well, you got only free. if you didn't agree to one year service, was if it one agree, year service or two? Whatever. Oh yeah. At least one year. service. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. I mean, even if you get it and then end up doing something else, just don't pay the bill, the bill that's free, then it's still free. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> just say, yeah, saying. no problem. I'm going to, I'll use yeah. it for two years or, <laughs> or whatever. And, who cares? It's free. <laughs> so it states that it's going away for new subscribers. So that might mean current customers who have it are grandfathered in and it will remain that way. Um, it doesn't really go into detail about yeah. that. In place of this, Google is putting in um, a Fiber 100 option, which is a $50 a month for a sync. I put synchronous. I don't know why I put synchronous. It's symmetrical. Symmetrical 100 megabits per second. That's basically 100 megabits per second up and down. Uh, which is pretty fucking badass. I wish I could get that for fifty bucks a month. Um, Google still Even offers fifty dollars. Uh, like, I expected them to have like a cheaper service. Going from free to fifty is a big jump. Well, of course it is, but nothing's free in America. Yeah, but I anyway, just, I just figured Google would have like a twenty-five still, it, like, service for like oh well, yeah. bucks. You, you would know, think that they would cheap but... like that. Well, I mean, for the like a free plan, so. Yeah, you know, instead of going from free to fifty, that's a that's a big jump, especially you know low income or something like that. You know, but the thing is, or is elderly that or something like that. You don't have a lot of money. They're hundred. Uh, they're one hundred and one hundred fifty dollar a month is still cheaper than most of the lower tier of their. Oh yeah, competition. I mean, yeah, so. it's still price wise, the 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 fiber one hundred option is still. I know what you're saying, price. but yeah. Go to go to fucking Starbucks if you're that cheap to pay fifty dollars a month or you gotta to buy like a five dollar coffee, man. No, you don't. You don't have yeah. to buy anything to at Starbucks. Just go in there and do your work all day long. They ain't, they don't care. <clears throat> so Google still offers a free basic service in Austin, Texas, and Provo, Utah. Uh, unofficial reports say that fiber expansion by Google um, is costing them one to two billion dollars this year to do the expansions that they're doing which um it says here i wasn't going to type all this out and i didn't feel like copying and pasting um but it says uh google plans to bring fiber service to san francisco salt lake city san antonio nashville huntsville charlotte and raleigh durham down the road google is eyeing 11 more cities for potential expansion including chicago irvine yeah. uh jacksonville los angeles louisville uh Oklahoma City, Phoenix, Portland, San Diego, San Jose, and Tampa. I knew you were going to be excited yeah. about that. <laughs> That's what I so. need, some Google Fiber in my life. So, yeah, it'll make you poop regular. So, anyway, it's pretty badass. Um, so, I, like that? Yeah. I know a lot of people uh, that, <clears throat> whenever it first came out, said that they absolutely loved it, and they still love it. So, I mean, I, I haven't... I haven't heard any bad things. Of course, I don't really look up about bad things either. Um, about like maybe dropouts or any times where I've they had didn't some have service, and but stuff it's it's gonna but, happen. You're not gonna yeah. prevent that. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. 
Yeah, so. I mean, shit happens. So as long as they respond and they have, you know, no big deal. So, but yeah. We had that issue. Tampa. We had the issue today at a corporate campus. Mm-hmm. Um, the main fiber line going into the campus or whatever, I guess, was like um, cut through. Oh, <laughs> by man. somebody doing <laughs> doing like some kind of date, like Paris they, stuff. Um, yeah, like they were like um, doing construction work around the pl- the to the campus, the plant or whatever, and they, I mean, so they cut themselves out clean freaking cut straight through this freaking uh it was bad it was bad um Thanks, more, uh, they had morse com there they had our guys there the telecom telecom guys there everybody was there trying to get that shit patched up because there was literally zero internet at the entire corporate campus mm-hmm. <sighs> that's uh mm. that's take some work to fake repair a fiber line and do it properly yeah those guys make some good money yeah <clears throat> it, it, it was pretty bad. Um, the radios and everything were going nuts because I mean I live I work right across the hall from the main station for the service desk calls, so I get to hear everything that goes on. I was like, oh man, mm-hmm. it's like somebody's you know getting guys fired. Weren't, weren't happy. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I have, I got a conference call, and well, it's really bad too. Um, names aren't saying bro, but without same. giving out too much stuff, but it's really bad because of all others like loads of like serious crap going on right now with uh with the company and expanding and loads of uh customers coming in this week and um next week and uh, it was just really bad timing but mm-hmm. i laughed i'm, sur- I'm really surprised I'm like, that they wouldn't have like a backup or something. i know i thought i know that's what i'm that's what i was su- well unless i mean you're supposed to call before you dig bro yeah <laughs> so I'm well, supposed they, to check for that kind of two shit fiber too. lines I mean, like even though you know they have machines it's two different companies or whatever or like a redundant um fiber backbone yeah. or whatever maybe it's just one line like physical line coming in or you know a like bulk cable or whatever and they right. just cut clean through both of them <laughs> probably all i know is they said that it was a clean cut like clean through the cables and the, the whole entire campus was without internet for like quite a while <laughs> so Pretty funny, but whatever. That is funny. All right, so next one. Microsoft adds QR codes to blue screen of deaths in new Windows preview build, which I guess isn't really a preview build anymore. I don't know if the actual official update came out or not, but... Um, I'm not sure. It's kind of pointless and dumb, really, um, whenever I started no, looking at it's it. it's good. It's not, I mean, though. It's not, though, because... Hold on a second. So it says Microsoft wants users um, with blue screen of death to scan a QR code to get help on fixing your error. So this is cool. I understand what they're trying to do here. And in, in theory, it's it could work and be interesting. Um, it also displays a URL, which can you can either remember or take a picture of. So this is the part that is like, what? Because if you can take a picture or have to take a picture or try to remember a link, if you don't have a QR scanner, because never, I mean, no phone comes. I don't think. Maybe Android does. I don't know. Does the Android camera have a QR scanner in it now, or do you still have to download an app specifically for that? I have no that? idea. I've never scanned a QR code in my life. So that's where I'm like, you have to have an app to be able to do that, and not everybody would know what app to do or how to find it or whatever. But anyway, so it's like take a picture of the link. Or remember it. Well, okay, if you can take a picture, if you're going to take a picture of the link or the URL or whatever, then why wouldn't you just take a picture of the error code? Because that's the thing that they were saying. It's like, oh, you can't remember the error code. But then they tell you to take a picture of the screen. Well, then just take a picture of the screen with the error code. If you don't want to use the QR code, if you want to enter it manually. That's what I'm saying, though. So if you're going to take a picture of the screen anyway, because you don't have the QR code, then you could just take a picture of the original error code well i mean which is what this is supposed to be preventing i don't know whatever it's stupid all around in my opinion but um i guess that makes it a little easier I mean, you just what, scan the qr code and get some helps on what, so what that'll be good happens. when it, it actually works properly because right now it just takes you to a web page that says oh you got a blue screen of death well this is what you know the blue screen means mm-hmm. it doesn't actually take you to a page on how to fix your fucking error because it's not implemented yet. There's not, there's not any, and nobody well, has not had the yet. problems and everybody has, well, that's what I'm saying. So if you don't have it linked yet, then 
don't even put it in a preview build because people can't test it properly. <laughs> so it just seems pointless to me. I don't know, whatever. But uh, I, I mean, I, I didn't. I, even... I assumed it just went to the the code message. Like, well, that's most, what I would think too. Have but... code messages. You can go to Google's website. Right. Yeah. You know, readings on what actually happened. So, <laughs> but I like the thing at the very, very end. The very, very end of this article is pretty funny because I actually remember whenever this happened. Um, it says that adding QR codes and URLs to blue screen at desk could be problematic in the long run. One of the um, one of the favorite IT horror stories of all time involves a QR code um, Heinz, the ketchup company, in a fit of uh, futurism, put a QR code on its ketchup bottles in Germany to help people enter a competition. But then it committed the cardinal sin of letting the domain name registration lapse and a hardcore porn site then picked up the domain name. So anybody that found that bottle and scanned the QR code, it took them to a hardcore porn site instead of the competition. So it's just funny because I could see that happening with Microsoft. But, I don't think they're that dumb. Like, I think you know, could, we didn't think something. that Heinz would be that dumb either. I mean, well, I did Jesus it for, a comp- or, uh, for a competition, which is retarded. So I would definitely link. Well, I wouldn't link anything outside your main domain. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, it, I guess, I don't know, whatever. I guess Microsoft is trying to be cool <laughs> and hip and I just trying to be dumb. next gen, yo. I just find it to be really stupid and pointless in my opinion. It's, it's worked perfectly fine for decades of just look typing in the freaking error code and searching it and being like, oh, that's how I fix it? Cool. Why do I need to do this now? Just makes it a little bit easier. I probably will never use it. I don't use QR codes anyways. but somewhere. Which kind of makes me mad because I'm wondering if it's going to give you the stop code. Like, I wonder if it's still going to give you the actual error code or is it going to force you to do this? I don't know. Probably force you. Then fuck it'll, Microsoft. It'll only work on Microsoft Edge too. It won't work on Chrome or Netscape. Yeah. If they, <laughs> if they force me to download a QR scanner just to try to f- find the error code and what's wrong with my computer, I will leave Windows for sure. Then. All right. So the next one. Seems pretty minor to leave Windows no, for. I'm not, they're, they're forcing you to download <clears> extra <throat> shit on your phone just to get an error code when the way that they've done it in the past 30 years or 20 years or whatever is what's Let's be real. Fine. When you got a blue screen, who actually looks at the error code? I think me? maybe once I have in all the years of doing it. Really? I, reset I do it every time. Go. I do it every time, and then I Google it on my phone, and I see what might be causing it, and then I reset my computer. Every it's always, time. It's always because I'm doing some overclock or something retarded anyways. Oh, yeah. If you know that that's what's causing it, that's fine. But if you're just using your computer, and, and it's been fine for the last six months, and all of a sudden it happens, that's not just because of your I overclock. reset and go. Okay. Actually, Some people actually give a flying fuck what's going on with their computer. So. Eh. Hack. All right. It has to happen multiple times for it to finish. <clears throat> no, I always search. Well, uh, Logitech make it easier for you because now you can just well, scan no, the it's QR not because code. now I have to freaking go download an app. Apple comes with one built in. No, it doesn't. Oh, I figured they would. Apple. So Logitech like buys audio device maker Jaybird for fifty million in cash. So cash money. Jaybird makes the wireless sport headphones, Blue Buds X, along with some other ones. Um, the Bluebirds X or, or Blue Buds X are the main ones that were actually any good, and they made other ones that were pretty shit. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, they expanded um, their market, I guess. Getting so yeah, they said uh, with, with the uh, uh, with a potential to earn out of an additional forty five million if growth targets are met. Yeah, just people with money. Getting more money. No big deal. Uh, and I don't know. I, I'm I'm kind of um, I don't know. Whatever. What? I'm, speak I'm not your gonna mind. Say it. No, speak I'm not your gonna mind. Say it. You're not allowed to have opinions on the internet's. Man, you're a vagina. It's my safe space. No words can hurt me. So many people on. The comments section and on Reddit or Linus's forum. I don't remember where I found this article, but um, 
said that they're happy that this is happening because Logitech makes great headphones. I don't agree with that, but I make fine headphones. Mm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. Nothing wrong with them, but Jaybirds were really good, and I just see Logitech turning it into some Beats bullshit, is the way I see it going. Like, I liked your nine, or what are they, G920s? 930s, I think. 930s. Mm-hmm. I liked yours because it was simple. But now their Spectrum ones or whatever have all that. I, I'm, I'm just tired of RGB. I think it looks so shit. <laughs> I think it really does look gay. Like, I don't like the the fucking Tron look. I don't want to look like some freaking space age mutant when I'm wearing headphones or playing a game or whatever. I just think it's so pointless. I don't see the point in having all the rainbowy shit going on on my ears and lighting up my headphones. I mean, just give me good fucking sound, and that's all I need, which is exactly the reason why I bought these. Wow. <clears throat> you can uh, customize the color to Who match gives your a fuck? red build or whatever, you know? Nobody's like going that. to see you, so why does it matter? Why Why did you go with the red theme in your Because I can see that. I don't see this. It's on my ears. It's the same thing. No, it's not. Yeah. Colors, on, uh, colors all over your headphones is not the same thing as your case on your computer. No, it's not. You want to match? You want to match? It's a big deal. It's gay. So, all right. Oh, I can't say gay anymore either. I forgot. I got chewed out by a uh, chewed out by a uh, viewer for saying yeah. that word because that doesn't mean bad. Which I could be saying happy because technically that's where gay came from is meaning happy. That's where it started first before it meant homosexual. So it's not my fault some moron decided to start calling homosexuals gay whenever gay meant happy. <clears throat> so anyway, <laughs> Android N Developer Preview 2 includes Vulcan. Um, I read this briefly um, like a week ago. Yeah. Was it a week ago? About a week uh, ago. About that. Five days ago. Mm-hmm. Five or six days ago. So, uh, they, yeah, I, just, I guess uh, they knew support was coming. I didn't know support was going to be coming that soon to Android, to be quite honest, but apparently it is. It's um, built in with the OS, though. It's not like, uh, like uh, the Samsung Galaxy S7. Um, you can get Vulcan drivers for those, but, of course, it's not on Android N. They're still on... I mean, maybe M? I don't know. Let's see. So it says, whether the benefits end up being higher performance or just better better battery life as a CPU can downclock more and more often. Depends on the application, but it can be useful for 3D applications and eventually even 2D ones like future QT applications with many uh, elements or even web browsers when drawing complex sites. It's good that Google is supporting Vulkan, especially after their ban of OpenCL drivers from Nexus devices. We want a single GPU compute interface across as many platforms as possible, while Vulkan isn't as complete as OpenCL. Lacking some features such as unified memory, it should be more useful than OpenGL um, compute shaders. So, sweet. Google is backing Vulkan now, so that's awesome. I mean, they were already backing it, but I mean, now it's actually going to be used in something. Yeah. So. I want Google in. So why don't you flash the developer preview? Because I'm too lazy. I, I, like my, I like my phone working properly. Word. All right. Man, so I got last... way over all that. Rom flashing a long time ago. Yeah, it's only because you didn't have a phone worth flashing. If I, th- I honestly think that if you would have continued to buy the new, latest, and greatest phone, you would have stayed in it a lot longer. But because you couldn't and didn't upgrade your phone, you just didn't give a shit anymore. I don't know. It's just Mine so, was so I enjoyed doing it, but then I was just like, why? 
Exactly. It's like I, I, I flash a phone. Everybody says that the new Cyanogen mod or whatever awesome. is the best one. I crappy. flash the phone to the newest Cyanogen mod and everything fucking stops working. Everything crashes. Everything does that. I'm like, so what's the problem with this? I don't know. Mine doesn't have that. Maybe you should try reflashing it again. Yes, let me spend another couple hours freaking wiping my phone again, reflashing the damn thing again, and then have it doing the same damn thing. So I was just like, I'm done. And so that's one of the reason why I went to a Nexus because every ROM that I got was to get rid of TouchWiz's garbage. So I went to a Nexus 5. I never flashed it once. I flashed it with, I mean, I didn't flash it, but I. You didn't flash custom ROMs. You just flashed I didn't flash Google ROMs. Yeah. I flashed official Google ROMs, not developer previews, but official ROMs. Um, to get the update sooner and I flashed APKs of the latest and greatest Google apps before they actually came out on my phone over the year. So like the APK like I sent you for the new camera, camera. 3.2 or whatever, I'd flash that shit like within seconds. I'd see the link thing in the, my Twitter feed, click on the link, download the APK, flash the APK or in, side load the APK and be done. I'm not trusting enough of that. It's straight from Google. It's signed. So Probably. It's, yeah, I mean, I never looked at the where the, the link was coming from, but I'm like... You know, uh, Android Police uh, always does the uh, legit straight signed from Google stuff. Straight from Google. So yeah. it's it's fine to download it from them. Yeah. Um, all right, so it's Intel so cutting 12,000 like, jobs. Someone's going to add some keylogger or something on that. I'm just not going to touch it. Wait till it comes uh, to the market. Like, like uh, You mean like Google that installed it right on your OS? Exactly. I don't know what you're talking about. Google has a keylogger on your phone already. So, it's from Google. I trust Google. They have access to all my information, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> I don't want no third party Skynet. access to it. Skynet. All right. Um, so, this one, I just popped up. Um, when did this come out? The 19th. So, yeah, two days ago. Um, I saw it in a another... Uh, tech sh uh, tech live stream that I was watching, and uh, I thought it was uh, pretty pretty crappy, but um, that's the way it goes, I guess. Hey, so. restructuring, you're refocusing, trying to move to different markets. Yeah, know, but something. the funny thing is, is that I see them cutting twelve thousand jobs, and then just in like another two years or so, they'll probably hire like another like eight or nine thousand people back. So I think it's just pointless. Well, they're it's not gonna. I mean, field. yeah, I don't know. I think it's dumb, but whatever. So 12,000 jobs, which is 11% of its total workforce, which is bananas. I didn't really know, know that they had that many people working for them, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, so Intel is Oregon's largest private employer with 19,500 working at, at the campuses in Washington County. Uh, the company gave no immediate indication of how the layoffs would be distributed. If applied evenly across the business worldwide, they would eliminate 2,150 Oregon jobs. But there could be like... 8,000 in Oregon, and then the rest of them could be in China or mm -hmm. wherever else they have places. So, anyway, uh, I thought it was pretty crappy, but, I mean, that's, again, that's how it goes. When you're in that type of field. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was interesting, though, they talk about the, the profit margin of Intel. It said 60% profit margin. Gross profit margin uh, off the products they sell, which is pretty ridiculous. Yeah. So they make a lot of money. Intel makes a lot of money, but, you know, that's perfectly fine. They're restructuring. I think the in the article, um, they said they're going to try to focus more on, uh, you know, mobile platforms like phones and stuff like that. So, I mean, they don't have any of those chips. It's all Qualcomm. I think that in here they talk about they hired a Qualcomm business manager or something like that. Um, yeah, the for, former... Uh, Qualcomm executive Venkata Murthy, Rin, Rindu Chidden, whatever. I'm not even gonna. I'm gonna give up on that name. So yeah, they hired that um, <clears throat> Qualcomm executive. So they're definitely uh, refocusing their business on the PC platform, which has been shipments have been dropping year after year. So as more people are just using their smartphones for everything, tablets and stuff like that, rather than having laptops and personal computers and stuff like that. So got to evolve or you die. 
Yep. So, but yeah, no, it is shitty for um, eleven thousand or twelve thousand people. Though. I think they could have found uh, found jobs that keep them relevant and all that other stuff for those twelve thousand people. Oh, they, I think in the article they said if you're um, really pushing it anything, and you got sixty like percent profit previous, margins, uh, you can keep those people. What's it called? The previous um, um, layoffs that they've done, they've had it so you could re try to reply kind of thing to different positions that they're opening up. So, so you should just even do if you're, that. If you're, uh, you shouldn't have to do that. Jobs That's the being thing. eliminated. It's not much. They should be like, hey, hey, um, your job, we don't really need that position anymore. Are you capable of doing that? Or you probably already know because a lot of these people probably worked at the company for quite a while. So reuse those people. They shouldn't have to reapply for a job. I just think that's complete bullshit. I I don't like the 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 no more employee employer loyalty that that happens now. And you know, it's just it's not like it was in the seventies, eighties, and all that other kind of crap where they cared about their people they're just like oh well you know we gotta eliminate twelve thousand jobs for all these people when like a week worth of them reading a fucking book they could probably turn around and and, like 90 percent of them be able to do all of this mobile computing crap because it's probably just coding and most of these people are already coders so i don't understand it makes no sense to me you'd think that they'd be able to keep them on because if it's ramping up in mobile industry so much and they make 60% profit margins, they obviously aren't hurting. So train these people and make them do mobile computing now instead of whatever they're doing now. But instead, we're just going to throw 12,000 more people out in the fucking you know, streets and of unemployment and everything else, which is already getting hammered like crazy because people are lazy as fuck. I don't know. It just seems stupid to me. Eh, it's business. Yeah. That's why unions are good. Sixty <laughs> percent profit margins, and you have to cut company or cut people out or whatever to try to save money. <sighs> I don't know about save money. They're just obsolete. But they're not. They're coders. Coders are never obsolete. It doesn't say who they are. Uh, Twelve thousand jobs. I mean, come on, man. I don't know what they are. That's what I'm saying, though. Could be uh, ramping 12, down production, people. so they're getting rid of production people because they're not making as much chips. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know anything about the the business and what they're doing, but <clears throat> I mean, you gotta stay afloat or you know relevant and profitable, profitable, or you lose money and you lose everything else. It's a problem with the. I guess the free market then, I guess you could say. All that boils down to share pricing. Got to keep your shareholders cap happy, which is everyone with a 401k that invested in them. So it is everyone. <laughs> yep. It's Wall Street running the world. Yep. So. Oh, Bernie Sanders, he'll take down the big banks even though he won't tell you how. What a joke. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to go political, but I just think it's funny. Uh, all of them. I'm not just saying Bernie. I'm saying all of them. All of the U.S. political people running for presidency claim they're going to do all sorts of shit, but then when you ask them how, they never answer. They never have an answer for anything. They just claim they're going to do stuff because they're trying to sell you all these rainbow farts and butterflies and tell you everything's going to be magical if you elect them. And they're going to be just as shitty as the last guy and just as shitty as the guy before him and all about themselves and not about the people. Like that quote that I posted today about Mark Twain said, if voting actually mattered, they wouldn't let you do it. Because then they wouldn't have control. And the government doesn't like it when they don't have control. Dude, come on. I don't know. Whenever the po- the most popular vote, most popular person doesn't even get put in, that's that tells you right there it's fucking rigged. <clears throat> it depends. 
It doesn't depend. If the popularity, if everybody and the majority of people say, I want that guy, and they pick a different guy, there's well, no what's, depending what's, about that. It's, what's, what's the majority, though? Just the overall majority? Well, you have, let's say you have four, like two people. One gets 65%, one gets, what is it, 35%? overall or like jurisdiction majority votes i'm just saying like me you the people voted mm -hmm. and if you put all of the take everybody's votes and this person got 65 percent of the votes this one got 35 percent of the votes and then they pick a completely different person or they pick the one that had the lower amount of the votes that tells you right there that it doesn't matter your vote doesn't matter and that's so, how the system yeah. works yeah so it's pointless can't, to vote can't remember what they call that <laughs> but when they uh gerrymandering or something like that where they something um, like that yeah. get the, just... the voting districts to get all their supporters on it so they can get you know they can win their district and then it doesn't matter after that yeah it's dumb mm -hmm. and i do really like that thing i know it's just like a like a meme or like a joke or whatever <laughs> But that one thing about like where they say, I mean, it's a legitimate thing. I mean, it, they make it into a meme and a joke, but I think it's a thing that should actually exist where they say about like how um, um, politicians and everything should have to show who's paying for them. Kind of like NASCAR racers and all that stuff have like all their sponsors and everything all over them. I think that should be a legitimate thing and I don't see why that would be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. If they don't think it's a bad thing and they don't think that it's wrong that they do that, then why are they not willing to air that crap out while they're standing up there debating? You know what I'm saying? Like, it shouldn't, if it's not illegal or not a bad thing that they're doing it, then they should be willing to air that out and say, yes, I'm bought by all these people right here. All these people have given me money. And if it's people that I don't like or those people don't like, I guarantee it. If the people that are voting for a certain party, I don't care what side it is, who it is, or whatever, I guarantee it, if they found out the amount of who was giving them money for their... They just need to get rid of uh, that... Uh, get rid of the money out of Wall Street. I mean, uh, the money out of uh, politics right. altogether. That's what so. I'm saying, though. But that's mm -hmm. never going to happen, so they need to do it a different way. So I guarantee you, though, a, a ton of people. I mean, the information's out there. It's just would change their it. mind on the person they're going to vote for if they knew who was supporting and paying but, that person. I mean, the information is out there. So, whose fault is it really? Is it really out there though? Yeah, it's not out there on the major news sites where people are looking. So, it's therefore, not it's not out there. I mean, That's you can go saying. research it and get it. It's all but public people don't do that because everybody's fucking dumb. So. What's the real problem? Is it the people or? <laughs> it should be on the debate. When they're on the debate, which is what 90% of the people that are into this shit watch, it should be plastered right there on their podium, right there on their screen or whatever. It's, you know, Goldman Sachs or whatever paid these people this much money. That They're bought out by that guy. They're bought out by that guy. They're bought out by this bank, that bank. I guarantee you people will be like, holy crap, I didn't know that. I hate the, all those companies or whatever, and I hate what they stand for. And they would go vote for the other person because of that. But they don't know because they don't either go look for it or it's not readily available smack right in their face because too many people are stupid. It's and they don't actively go search it's... that stuff. So that's why I'm saying for the dumb, <clears throat> uninformed people, it, exactly. And it's wrong. It should be plastered right there in the front of everybody to see. Because they don't feel like it's wrong that they're doing that. So why don't you just tell everybody? Because they need to. Because they know the, it's wrong. <laughs> hurt hurt uh, the people the way they need to. Yep. It's not Meh. wrong. Meh. Bunch of sheep. <laughs> Pretty much. People are dumb and they're lazy. Yep. yep. So the, just what they see on TV and campaign ads is what they go off of. They don't do research for themselves. They don't think for themselves. It's part of the problem of today's society. Well, stupid, stupid, but stupid. Indeed. I guess it's enough political talk because no one really wants to listen to that nope but yeah 
Nobody wants really to listen want to, to it, build which a is the reason why dumbass motherfuckers get elected. Because nobody wants to listen to it. Pretty much. Yeah, I want to build another computer, but I don't at the same time. I really do. I just don't see any... I don't know. There's no benefit to it, but I just want to build No, one. there is no benefit to it. And that's the thing. It's like... I mean, I'm like, like sitting like here thinking about it, about you know, my, uh, I'm like, oh, my, oh I got my 58, server. I got my 5820K, all right? And I'm like, okay, well, I wonder what my difference in, in my, like, uh, in my um, uh, rendering times and my exporting times on Premiere for my videos and all that stuff would be between my 5820K, which is what, 390 or whatever we found out, and then in the 5930X or, you know, 5930 or no, 5960X. It's only like maybe like three or four minutes difference. It's like, so, okay, so I'm going to spend another fucking $700 on a chip to gain only three, four minutes of rendering time or less time. Fuck that. That's not worth it to me. It's the same thing as like offering the tiered graphics cards. I mean, yeah. If I mean, graphics top, cards is different because I can see the 144 hertz while I'm playing it. Like, I can see that versus what the 970 was giving me. But three to four minutes on a render on rendering a project or exporting a video, I usually hit export and walk away anyway. And yeah. then I come back 20 minutes after it's done and say, oh, yeah, I forgot that this was even fucking exporting. <laughs> so it's not it's not worth it to me. I don't exactly, see three yeah, to four minutes sure. being worth 700 bucks. But mm -hmm. seeing 80 frames per second to 120 or 130 frames per second for a difference of two, three hundred dollars from the 970 to a 980 Ti, that's worth it to me. Because you can see it happening, but three to four minutes difference for 700 bucks. That's why I don't I, I don't really see me upgrading anything on this computer except for the the um, video card for a while. Because I'm not gonna gain anything from it. Even the Freaking, what is it? The uh, um, <clears throat> Broadwell E still isn't even for. worth it. Still isn't so, worth it. The single threader performance is good, and the overclock ability is good. It won't even be noticeable. It It'll be extremely negligible. You'll probably see like what, maybe eight frames, if that. Like on not in that gaming, much. it's only probably worth it if you use it, but you don't use it. I use it all the time. I don't know what you're for what? About everything for um enco uh, re-encoding uh, f1 videos and that's it you don't stream Sh with it you don't i stream all the time i don't know what you're talking about you watch streams all the time i stream all the time you haven't been watching you're I, wonder. Such a liar. I haven't gotten an email from you that you're streaming in almost a year you must have uh not or messed up your notification settings on no, twitch actually i went back and looked at all that and i Turned off all the notifications from everybody except for you. Because I don't care when Summit goes live or Lyric. I think I actually unsubbed, unfollowed Lyric because he's dumb and annoying now. <laughs> <laughs> he's just cocky as shit. I can't stand him anymore. That's he how just, he always was. I uh, know, but he's like even more so now. I don't know. Summit seems like he's getting more humble as the time goes on. It's really weird. Like, back whenever I first originally started watching him, because you were watching him, he seemed like he was cocky as fuck. But now it seems like as the time goes on, and the more the, the, the times that I do watch him, which is very rarely, it's like maybe once every couple weeks or something, I might watch a stream for a few minutes or whatever, he seems to be more like, you know, less, you know, oh, you guys are fucking here to see me, and more, I'm only here doing this because you guys are actually here. Mm-hmm. Whereas Lyric is just like, I don't fucking care about you assholes and you're going to give me money regardless. So I'm just going to play and do whatever I want to. And I don't know. I just, I don't like his attitude with people, but whatever. Word. My opinion doesn't matter just like everything else. So. Word. But yeah, but yeah. no, I stream all the time. So you better check your, uh, your settings. Stream. So no, I don't. But now I want faster single threaded performance. For what? For everything. For what? What are Games. you going to use it for? For what? Counter Games. Strike, so you get the same sure. exact frame rate that you're getting now. Everything. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. You're going to pay that kind better. of money for using it in no way at all. It makes I don't know whatever. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs>
<laughs> it's cheap. Seems pointless to me. Be like, maybe a hundred bucks. Yeah, so that's that's cheap and okay, but it's not worth it to you to um, to buy a controller to have more fun with your games than that measly th- single threaded performance. Oh, it definitely is. Just when you don't have the money to buy one, you just can't. I I, I know, but how are you going to have the money to buy your chip? If you Chip's don't have the not money out to buy yet. A Thirty dollar <laughs> controller. <laughs> <laughs> By the time it's chipped out, I might have some money. Probably not, but maybe. We'll see. No, I am going to buy a controller, though, especially to play some, uh, what's it called this yeah, week? I think I, might, I think I might play that tonight, actually. It's going to be new blood, even though I suck. It. I suck so deep. bad in that game. I thought I was good. When it first came out, I was kicking ass. I was like, I had people dropping out of my team, and I was soloing one v threes and winning like five to nothing. I was creaming people like crazy, and then I didn't play it for like three or four weeks. And they came out with the ranked matches and everything, and then I went back in and started playing the ranked matches, and all of a sudden I just I just I couldn't win anything. I couldn't hit a ball. I hardly ever touched it. People are like freaking flying through the air from one end of the court to the or the one end of the field to the other end of the field. The ball's not even hitting the ground. I'm like, what the hell happened? <laughs> it's like I I went from, you know being global elite versus a bunch of silvers to now I'm the silver and everybody else is global elite because of three weeks of not playing it. I'm like, what the hell happened? Hey, like everybody got started, hacks. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's crazy. It's the matchmaking working. You're playing people of your level, which means people yeah, are actually why, worse than you. That's why I play the unranked stuff now. Because I don't care about, so you know. You just want to smurf. <laughs> well, it's not really smurfing. You still play with everybody. Yeah, every, yeah skill level but it's just i don't i'm not worried about ranking up in that game i just play it to have fun mm-hmm. but ah, man control. it's it's fucking it's it, i don't know if it's just me i mean i know that we're still streaming a little bit right now but um if anybody has played rocket league if you want to like you know back me up here it is an extremely well, i mean i guess you'll i know what you'll say every online community is toxic but um, it's so fucking toxic. Every online community is toxic. It's so bad though. It's like you, you, you're like <laughs> flying through the yeah, air. You, last night. you like jumped up. You like you, <laughs> yeah. You jump up to hit the ball, and when you jump up to hit the ball, and you get rammed by another car, they blame you. They're like, "You fucking suck, man. You can't even hit the ball." And it's like, dude, I was going towards the ball, and somebody hit me and knocked me out of the way. That is, not, is something I could not avoid. <laughs> there's absolutely no way to avoid that and they like blame you for it it's ridiculous indeed so it's just like okay yeah i'm done playing this so i usually only play like maybe three or four matches and then i turn it off because people would just irritate me and piss me off i don't i don't get it like i never i never talk shit in games except for like to you and you know kenny like joking around but i i don't think i've ever been in a game where i ha- i've gone over the comms, whether it's typing or speech. What's it called under Steam? What? Just Rocket League? Rocket League. But I have never, ever, ever, ever that I can remember unless they started, you know, talking shit first and I was just like, yeah, whatever, you suck. And that was it. I don't, I have never been in a an online game and talk shit to somebody. And told them that they sucked. It's not showing up on my list for some reason. I I don't I don't see the oh. reason or the point. That's weird. Like, does it make you works. feel better talking shit to somebody and make you feel cool because you're bashing them and stuff? I I just don't get it. I don't I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, you bought it? No, I just installed it because it's free. Oh. But it's under like your list of games, so I don't know if I'm using like your key. Like if we could play together, use a controller for the optimal playing experience. Yep, you're boned. It says Tissimo. It doesn't say Unipius, so. God damn it. Why is it not? Oh, my God. 
I keep screwing up and not going to bit.ly first and pasting it there. Max FPS 62. What? 145. Apply. Anti aliasing. All right. MLAA. Let's do that. Rendering quality, high quality. You can run that thing at max settings on the 750. Yeah, I know. It was like 98% though <laughs> on that shit card. That was so painful. For like 87. Two, that two week period that I had to rock the 750. Uh, it's 84 to 87 percent. No menu. Yeah, menu is the hardest. 45. Part yeah, the, the menu is the <laughs> hardest part. I know. Look at all the grass. It looks super sick. All right, quit game. But yeah, no, it's it's like in the list. It's down under your name. The the game. Yeah. I was to find out. I'm like, what the fuck is it? I just yeah, didn't download really it. And installed it. So, yep. All right, uh, I was doing the bitlies and all that other kind of stuff. So anyway, um, I guess that's it for this week. Um, I don't really have anything else to, to say. Do you have anything else to say? Not really. Um, I am going to get a DAC soon, though. So I'll get you that to you so you can review it. and then So maybe we'll have some sweet, cool reviews, and maybe I can get some sweet, awesome sound with my Do you uh, Do you want to use it for a week and give me your opinion first, or a week or two, and then send it to me kind of thing, and then I can use it for like a week and then t test it out? I'd rather send it to you. First? Yeah. So that way you don't feel all like, man, yeah, this so thing's awesome, and then have then to be have without to it for it a while. <laughs> Go back to yeah. my crappy... Uh, yeah, that makes that does make sense. Series. So, which one are you planning on buying? Are you planning on buying the FIOS or the FIOS or how do you say it? No idea. I'm gonna or, go through okay. and do some research on it. So, um, there's been a lot of them popping up. I don't know if you want to go that route, but um, there's been a lot of them popping up on uh, Mass Drop. Like, I don't know what your price range is. I know you're not like you know super mad balling anymore. What? Probably like I don't know, like ten, fifteen thousand. Somewhere in that range. Oh, then uh, you should look at the uh, one the from Monster the, Cables one. The, <laughs> look at the <laughs> look at the tube uh, the tube amplifier that Sennheiser did. It's like I think it's like thirteen or fourteen grand. Uh, I don't want to cheap out, so maybe maybe twenty grand. I'm pretty sure they probably make one for that price <laughs> too. <laughs> Dude, they're ridiculous. They got some expensive shit, man. Yeah, dude crazy but no like uh what do you think your price range is just so i know so that way i can kind of like look and maybe know. find a deal like, like 100 bucks 80 bucks like 75 would be good all right if that's <laughs> like i mean i'll spend more but I mean, you want a usb one or yeah usb i guess i mean i don't know what they come in i assume they all came in usb for an external deck i mean how else do they connect i don't know I thought they had some that you plugged your. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm sure maybe they have. I thought they had by some USB that, and then they have like optical or something. I thought. Well, I know they have stuff. the ones that are powered by the wall, oh. and then they you have like the the three sure, and a half millimeter higher. jack that plug into it, and then you run it from your there to your headphones. Yeah, I don't think I need that high of a power one. I think I could power it no. off. No, especially yeah. if it's the game zeros. Yeah. Because I'm trying to think, uh, like, um, I'm yeah, just sure something it's... effective that's decent quality and fairly cheap, like comparable to buying a sound card. That's what I'm looking at. Which well, I guess sound cards like seventy five bucks, it's right? I isn't it? So yeah, that I think it was the whatever was the Fios or I don't Fio, know. yeah. Um, that one that was on uh, sale that one time. Let's go. But yeah, no, I think I'm going to get one of those. Going to buy a controller. See, I'm hood rich. I got my income tax return. Damn dog. All right. Now I have a couple. Yeah, that's the big thing, too, is um, I'm going to be uh, hopefully 
within the next see dude oh man i got i forgot to tell you this i got boned so bad right all right so adorama adorama is a, is like a big sales place for um, camera stuff right and um they had a they had a deal where you could buy the g7 the uh, lumix g7 or whatever for the 597 and then you got a, an audio technica at8028 i'm probably really wrong on that number but it's like 80 something it's a shotgun mic that's like a 250 dollars shotgun mic and you got mm-hmm. free with the $600 purchase of the camera. So wow. the camera is like eight, originally the MSRP is 800 bucks. The microphone is 250. So it's like a thousand dollars and some or $1,100 or yeah, like a little over a thousand dollars, 1100 bucks, whatever mm-hmm. uh, worth of crap for $600. So it was like a crazy freaking deal. The microphone is, eh, it's okay. I mean, obviously it's not like the Sennheiser shotgun mics or any like high end ones, but there's definitely a lot lower end ones mm-hmm. for shotgun mics. So a $250 shotgun mic, it's pretty decent. So I was all super stoked about it. And I was like, man, I was like, maybe I'll buy that one and use the shotgun mic instead of my lav- my lavalier mic. And then um, I could just, you know, have it pointing at me or whatever. And, and it will feed right directly into the camera. Mm-hmm. And it will less editing time and all that stuff because it's directly onto the video. I don't have to worry about bringing in audio as well but um syncing it and all that kind of crap um so the uh the deal ran out apparently so that adorama you can't do the microphone anywhere but i think the reason why is because they ran out and the uh, microphones are so far back ordered right now because so many people were buying this deal (laughs) that they just had to stop the deal because the back orders just kept getting further and further out Mm -hmm. and some guy said that he bought the camera like almost a month and a half ago and his microphone still hasn't arrived yet. So I'm like, Holy crap. I was like, okay. So I was like, "Uh, whatever, you know, I haven't got my money yet. It'll probably come in like in the next week or so. So I'm like, uh, you know, I got some time. Well then I'm like, Oh my God, uh, B and H photo, which I've bought my lights from, no, my lights came from Amazon. I bought some of some crap from B and H photo. I think I bought my camera from there. I bought my zoom H one from there. I bought my lav mic from there. A couple other things I bought from there. And um, they're really good, super fast shipping. I bought my camera from. I think that's where you bought your camera from, yeah. But like, I'm like, oh man, (laughs) thirty five years ago, whatever it was. They have the same deal. It's five hundred ninety seven dollars. It doesn't come with a mic, but it comes with a hundred dollar gift card. So I'm like, shit. I was like, the hundred dollar gift card, I can turn around and use and buy like extra SD cards because I gotta have to buy a dope ass SD card for Mm -hmm. like if I do decide to do the. I'll most likely do the four K and then um, scale it down to 1080p to get it extra sharp. I guess Uh, that's what a lot of people do with it anyway. So I was going to do all that or whatever, right? And so I was like, I'm going to need a, a good SD card for that. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I can use a $100 gift card. They freaking, um, uh, what do they call that? They observe the freaking Passover for the Jewish holiday thing. So they're fucking closed from now until May 1st. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it, man. So yeah, they're like, wow, that's yeah, a dude. long time. They said if you, if you ordered by 4 p.m. today, it would ship out like normal. Like you would, you would get it within a couple days mm-hmm. or whatever. But if you buy it and order it, you can only order it on like the 24th from a certain window to a certain window online. Um, and you could order it on the 28th from a certain time to a certain time. It's only like a four hour window you can order online. But if you order after 4 p.m. today, it will not process at all until May 1st. That's ridiculous. I'm like, son of a bitch, man. <laughs> I was like, I can't get the microphone because it's back ordered. I was like, if I buy it through the- Amazon has it for the same exact price, but you don't get anything with it. It's just the camera. And that's yeah. it. I might still do the the Amazon one and just add the SD card on it. Because you know how they always have those like, like, oh, other people bought these little things with mm-hmm. it. And they kind of give you a little bit of a discount on it or whatever. And get like an extra actual legit Panasonic battery and the um, uh, the SD card or something. I saw that. And it was like an extra like 60 or 75 bucks or something on top of the price of the camera. Yeah. So I might do it that way and then have two, the two-day prime shipping on it. So. You can also contact customer we'll service and be like, look, this company's offering this. Can you? Yeah, I could probably try that. And maybe, maybe, they'll, they'll, give maybe they'll give me an Amazon 80 gift or 50 card bucks or whatever. Or and yeah. then just turn around and buy that battery and stuff you were talking about. Yeah. You could probably it's worth a shot. Well. Amazon's customer yeah. service is usually pretty good. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's probably All a good idea. A little bit of typing. Mm hmm. 
And the worst they could say is no, and then I'm in the same boat that I'm in now. So. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, I'll probably do that, but uh, I'm pretty stoked about it. I, I, everybody says like like the still images are aren't as good as a normal just like DSLR camera because it's mirrorless and it's a small micro four third sensor. But all the images that I see of it, of course, I'm not a professional photographer. I don't like I mean, you know yeah. have the eye for it. Um, just like audio, I guarantee you, I could listen to, you know, I say these headphones sound amazing and, and those, you know, sound amazing in comparison to like my old Sony's that I had, but I guarantee you, like if you played like a 128 kilohertz song or whatever kilobits per second song or whatever versus like lossless audio, I, I guarantee you like nine times out of 10, I wouldn't be able to tell you the difference. I think you would. I don't think I would notice it that much. I think so. Like I don't. For not 128 that, not, is. I'm not is, saying like, you can like, notice a difference between like 128 and like 320. Um, I don't. I don't. I honestly don't think things, I would. On like, some I, things, right? Like, I think, of course, it's just a single tone. You don't need that much bandwidth, right? But, like maybe so. like orchestra <laughs> stuff, yeah. but like. I mean, if you, I mean, obviously, if you played the same song at like 128 and then you played the next one at 320, like back to back, I'd be like, oh, okay, there's a difference there. But if you just randomly chose a song and randomly chose a bit rate and said, what do you think that bit rate was? I wouldn't be able to tell you. Yeah, I could tell you. That's that. what I'm saying. You don't have the, it, it's not that noticeable to where you can be like, oh, that's definitely 320. There's people out there that can because they're more into it than I am, but in the same way with the camera. <laughs> 99% of the my photos that I'll be taking with the Lumix G7 will be like for thumbnails for the videos and like stills still shots for the videos. So yeah, I, it's not I'm not freaking making posters and professional photography yeah. with it. So Yeah, but even like even just using it around the I'd house, buy a full frame camera and yeah. stuff. I mean either going to use your phone or yep. I mean so it's not exactly. the best stuff anyways it's I'm getting it fun. for the video capabilities mostly so yeah. and for the phys- video capabilities it's like I the mean, best, even if best like bang for the buck right now but going to camp soccer practice or yeah. something it'll still be fine it's not like it's it's worse than your phone <laughs> you know what I mean and it's like it's like six or seven ounces lighter than my Nikon it's a pretty like small little thing, but um, and then I plan on using the one that I have now that I do all of my video shoots on and everything as like my B camera. So like if I wanted to have like multiple, Don't you know, camps. two angles or something, I'm gonna have them both recording at the same time and then switch between the different angles. Because I tried to do that with my PC cleaning video, but that failed because my two in one was being dumb and it like filmed at like 26 <laughs> yes. frames per second or something. It was like weird. It was so off. I don't even, it wasn't even 30. Like if it was 30, it may have been usable. It was but it probably, wasn't. it was trying to do 30, but it just like the Doesn't processor have the horsepower. couldn't keep up or something. Yeah. yeah. It was sad because I did have it on like uh, HD 1080p. So it was 1080p at 30 FPS and the freaking <laughs> processor's like, Oh my God. <laughs> so yeah. It wasn't a good idea, but yeah, it, it, the audio was normal, but the video was like lagging behind, and I'm just like, wow. So like in parts of the video, I'm like, oh yeah, you could see in the filter, and I'm like showing nothing. <laughs> yeah, it oh, sucked. Well. So anyway, but um, uh, the camera. Hopefully, as soon as um, I get my my money, I'll be able to um, buy that, and then of course I'll use it in a few videos and do a uh, review i might do an unboxing on it it was hard to do an unboxing on this camera because i didn't really have a good camera that's why i bought this one. yeah so i might use that camera to do an unboxing of the g7 and all that kind of crap just for an extra video to throw up even though that's been beaten to death just like everything else i buy yeah and the slider i plan on doing one Cameron's i still gonna... think we should do that one day um with, uh, oh, with the monitors the monitors thing i, think I don't know how a, we would do video. it though i mean well you'll have your hard. video camera just like set it up and i don't know that's what i'm saying are we going to test like the color yeah you can just do them side by side kind of show them but there's show... so it, there's so many variables that could yeah, throw it whatever. off just though. give it the the thing is, people want to see. I think, like, I, I'd like to watch a video. I mean, even, of course, you know, your settings are going to be see, But then it's a lot of it's stuff. based on the settings in the camera, too, on how well the, the it picks up the monitors. Well, so we could just show them side by side and then give us our opinions. Because yeah. if you could compare them side by side at the same image, I would trust that person's, 
you know, opinion of it more over someone that just, oh, I saw this one, then four months later I saw this one, and then trying to compare them. I don't know. I still think that'd be a good video. Honestly, what I would, what I, the the one that I've been really wanting to do, and um, I really uh, wish that it would be easier, but I know that his schedule's like really, you know, screwed up. Um, is I really wanted to do like a, um, like a m- episodic kind of version, like multiple version or not versions, but multiple episodes of him building his arcade mm-hmm. rig. So like do like an episode where we just talk about what the plans and the goals are. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second episode would be us like, you know, piecing it together, figuring out what parts we were going to buy and why we were buying them. And then the next video would be us like assembling the hardware for it. And then another video would be him building the box or buying the case for it and putting it all in. And then the last one would be us just playing games on it and showing how well it runs. Mm hmm. Like that would be freaking awesome. Like I would love to just take my, you know, put my lights in my car, bring the tripod and everything, the camera up there and like get like legitimately good, you know, sweet video of all of like the process of building that it would be freaking awesome and fun. But, so why don't you do it? Cause I, he, he hasn't even installed his SSD yet. That's cause he can't really do that. I guess, you know what I mean? But he can. You said that he can, and now you're calling him out. <laughs> well, so, Kenny, if you're watching, kick him in the balls. <laughs> well, I mean, I think he'd rather have help, you know. An but then I, I offer to help, and then he's just not available. He's got a crazy schedule, so. Just make time and do it. It's not that hard. Yeah. I mean, especially now he works uh, days. So, I mean, yeah, well, never mind. I was thinking he had weekends off, but he doesn't. No, he works the weekend. That's the yeah. problem. He's like off like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it's like yeah. I don't have a problem with coming up there after work. Like I could drive. We make a day where I'm just like, oh, I'm going up there. Mm-hmm. That's what I should do. I should go up there on a Wednesday night and do like the live show from his house. Yeah, just I mean, do me it. and him on the on the screen, and then with you, that'd be funny. But I don't know, man. I I, I just have like so many different ideas. I just don't know how to. Um, I don't know how to like film them, do them properly. Mm-hmm. But, so yeah, but we'll we'll work that out, get that going eventually. We'll yeah. discuss that and see if we can. Kind of like your uh, OBS settings video. I made that. I sent that to you. <laughs> Such a fucking liar! <laughs> <laughs> a horrible liar at that. <laughs> I thought right. about that the other day. I was like, hmm, maybe I should do that. Yeah. That. There's like a newer version out, so I gotta go through. I'll, I'll send you the three dollars and twenty five cents that you might make on it after like seven months. Really? Yeah. Oh sure. man, I'm gonna be rich. All right, we're gonna we're gonna bump it up to twenty five k then for the deck. Get that YouTube money. I'm really <laughs> curious though to see. I, I run, I'm really curious as to how much money like these big YouTubers make off of one video. Like just their Google AdSense stuff, like the ones that get like two hundred thousand views on a video, like regularly, like every video, and they make three videos a week, kind of thing. Like I wonder how much money they really make off of each video. No idea. Because it's really weird how it works. I'm not sure I quite understand it. I mean, I know that certain ads pull in certain uh, more revenue than another one, mm-hmm. but it's really weird. Like. My highest grossing video right now for as far as the amount of revenue that I've gotten off of the ads and everything is my, go ahead. Which one do you think, uh, which, which video of mine here, let me pull it up really fast. Which video, actually I'll do it on my phone so that way I don't accidentally show it. Um, Which video of mine do you think made the most money so far? I would guess, ooh, that's hard to think because I'm not sure the views, but I'd say probably like the Roku or something. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, I'd say like the Roku. I think no. that's the views are views are up there, aren't they? The views are well, no, actually the views are pretty low. Oh, never mind then. that. Um, no, my high. Uh, 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 let me see. What the hell? Where is that thing at that I can find? Revenue? Is it in there? I have no idea. Here, top earning videos. Okay. 
So my highest viewed videos are the Ergotech, mm -hmm. the uh, hybrid carbon case for the Note 5, and Classic oh. Shell. And the Classic Shell. So which ones do you think is the highest Ooh. grossing video that I have right now? That'd be difficult. I I want to say the the um the uh view or the uh case. Um just going by more people would view that on their phones and then just like the the ad connections through there it'd be a wide variety of uh ads. But also the classic shell would be bring a broad um viewer base. So I'm not sure. It's one of those two. See, you think like I think, and it doesn't yeah. work that way. <laughs> no, it's a specialized. I don't really know. I don't know how it works, but um, I'm not going to say the amounts because they're like super low and I'm embarrassed. But um, <laughs> four cents. Okay, cents. so oh, no. it goes. It, it shows my top. What is it? Five. My top five most profitable videos. Okay, the lowest one being a whopping thirty-six cents is all it made. Mm -hmm. Roku three review. How many views? Um, I don't know. I would have to go to another freaking thing. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. It next highest. I, next highest. So my the fourth highest one mm -hmm. is the uh, Note Five case. Really? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I guess a short video. I don't know. I don't know how it works. That's what I'm yeah. trying to figure out. Um, and I'll just say it. I don't care. That's made a whole whopping dollar fourteen. Mm -hmm. Okay. My third highest video is the Ergotech stand, and it's made two fifty. Mm -hmm. My second highest, which you were kind of close with this one, is the Classic Shell video, and it's made two dollars and sixty cents. So only ten cents more than the uh, Ergotech stand. But my highest grossing video of all of them is that stupid magnetic air vent mount. Three dollars and twenty-seven cents. That's weird. How does that make any sense? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Do you do custom AdWords and stuff?" Nope. So I just you make them. I just make the ads at the beginning of every video, and I also allow skippable ads, so they're skippable after like four or five seconds. Yeah. Don't meant like. Um, but I don't I know. Choose. You can type in like words like. Oh no! Like what used to? Oh, just like keywords and yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that. You do all the custom stuff. It has yeah. to be something with that, and then that links to certain types of videos or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. It's, <laughs> I, I, it makes no sense to me at all. Like some of the videos that I worked the hardest on haven't made any money. Mm -hmm. That's the weird thing. It's like it's just I don't know. It's just so odd. I don't I don't get it. So that makes me wonder. It's like, okay, do, do they have like a two hundred thousand dollar or two hundred thousand view video that like absolutely made nothing, like absolute crap, and then they have another one that made way more than what they expected it to? I mean, it's just all over the place, dude. Well, I think that's like. Um... I mean, obviously, I know that it has to do with when you release it because I know that like. Um, October, November, December are like the highest grossing months of the year because everybody's looking for shit to buy for Christmas and stuff. That's where more and because of the deals, you know, they're looking at they're looking at um, yeah when they're advertising and a lot more people are on there looking up reviews on things because it might be a good sale on that thing on Black Friday, so and Cyber Monday and all that kind of crap. So yeah, maybe it's because of when I posted them, it Could just be. netted more money that way. I don't know. It's just really weird. I mean, there's like there's got to be some something to do with it or whatever, some kind of algorithm that works with it. But it just it, it always baffles me every time I look at it, and I'm just like, really? Yeah, that is weird. Really? But yeah. So including the 38 episodes that we have now, how many of this? I have subscribers. Do you have? Uh, I'm at my highest ever right now at 181. Not bad. Not bad. I know. I I just saw that today. Whenever I was logging in to do all this, just set it up. I was like, oh, because sometimes I get an email when somebody subscribes, and sometimes I don't. So I think there's an option to where it doesn't send out. Yeah, like an anonymous type thing. Anonymous or something. type thing. Yeah. So because sometimes I'll get an email that somebody subscribed, and other times I won't. So it's like fluctuates all the time. But I'm at my highest right now at 181.
so that's pretty badass indeed does it show stint. like on the statistics does it show like view how like total views of the channel yeah what like you at? mean like just how many uh, like just general views yeah um let me see. i like channel me... views of like all the videos and everything like the, yeah how many times somebody has visited my th or views total yeah talking about of this of the channel uh, uh 82,564 not too bad not too bad at all. It's it's pretty decent. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I have fun doing them. It's just sometimes I just don't I don't want to get up because it's yeah. not like it's not like my job. Like if this was like my job, then I'd be like, let's get up and do this shit and knock this out. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I come home from working. Do all it day in your I'm free like, time. Yeah. I don't want to do. That. <laughs> I need to, but I don't. And, but Cameron's gonna be the cameraman for the uh, slider review. Nice. I told him that, and he goes, what am I going to do? And I'm like, you're going to be operating the slider. And he's like, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you can. You can handle that. Indeed. So, it'll be pretty interesting. But my plan is for that one is just to talk about it, because, again, I'm not a professional photographer or videographer, so I don't, I've never used any other slider but that one. So it's kind of hard to really review it. It's like, it glides nice. I mean, what else am I going to say? So um, I figured I would talk about it, explain how it's built, and it's built strong, blah, blah, blah. I've been using it for all my, you know, any videos that you want to look back on that I've done. And it has any panning shots. It was done with that. And then I plan on doing, like, uh, going out sometime during a weekend or something and uh, maybe go out by the beach or try to find somewhere where there's, like, some running water that might look kind of cool. And then like do like slow pan shots going across with like the wind blowing the bushes and just <laughs> random crap like that or whatever, you know, and show like a nice slow pan and then put like some nice relaxing music in the background to it and be like at the end of the video, be like, this is just some, you know, a quick two minute thing showing you what is, you're capable of doing with this. Yeah. But I'm trying to wait until I get the new camera because it'll look better. Yeah. <laughs> it's Indeed. like, I want to do it, but I don't. I want to do it, but I don't. So, yeah, there's definitely some things that I want to do, but um. I just, yeah. I'm, I'm having a hard time figuring out a haircut That's again. What I gotta yeah. do. You always got to get a haircut. shave. I need to shave. I need to shave my head, but I'm too lazy. So whatever. I can get a haircut tomorrow. Yeah. I was going to shave my head and face tonight, but I was going to shave gonna my face today. But then I was lazy. Like shave it, shave it or just like trim, trim it. Trim. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought Holy about crap. shaving. I don't think I've though. seen your. I haven't. I don't think I've seen your chin in like four years. I know. It'd be weird <laughs> if I shaved. It would look really funny. You'd look like you were like fifteen. <laughs> Seriously. So, I feel like All those right. memes online or whatever it shows the guy shaving his thing, and it shows like the last picture of just a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, because yeah, he shows them all. Oh, I'm 38 or something with a full beard, and then he uh -huh. shaves it down to a goatee, and he looks like he's 20, and keeps cutting it down and then he shaves his face and it's like <laughs> baby sitting there mm -hmm. pretty damn funny yep so, all right yeah. we'll cut this off before it hits two hours mm -hmm. so we went long like always but whatever just bullshitting well like the yeah, last hour was just bullshit yep sometimes that's what you need to do though indeed hang out and bullshit so, all right, everybody, we will be back next week, hopefully on Wednesday this time. Um, Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. time. Well, I guess it's just, can you just do YouTube slash Techtopia TV or is it gaming? Whatever. Anyways. No, it's, it's, it's actually YouTube.com slash C slash Techtopia oh. TV live or official live. Yeah, whatever it is. But yeah, just follow us on Facebook. Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. We'll uh, tweet out links and or post links, whatever you want to call it, to the show. And, and any new videos we have coming up, and then talk to us. Tell us what we, what you want to see in these any videos or any I'll articles you want to talk about. Any uh, anything like you tutorials, want to discuss. especially. I enjoy doing the tutorials, and it seems like a lot of people actually enjoy my tutorials. I don't know if I do a good job of just showing people things i don't know it's really weird like most of my comments are like on the classic shell thing asking me how to do a certain thing and I, I uninstalled it so it's like i can't remember and then i feel bad because it's like i tell everybody to go install it and i'm not even using it right now 
It's a good. It's a. It's a, It's good software, but Speaking I just. Much, I gotta upgrade my sister's computer to Windows 10. I don't think she's. I done just uninstalled things. everything whenever my computer was having that issue, and I just never went back. I just got used to just using Windows 10. Yeah. But uh, not I might install Classic Shell on hers because it's like I, I like Windows 7. I was like, yeah, you gotta get free 10 though, so that way when you can upgrade when you're ready. So, it's a good. Program, you could do that, can't you? It doesn't seem heavy. What? Get the free upgrade, and then just revert back know. to Windows. You can revert back, yeah. Well, I mean, just like I don't know if you clean keep... wipe and reinstall Windows Seven. I don't know. I don't know then if when it you install Windows Ten, key to a ten. I mean, you just I don't. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I guess you can do it and find out. Yeah, I got a couple Windows seven keys though so it doesn't really matter or you can just give her 10 and give her classic shell and make it like seven and tell her to shut awesome. up and quit yeah. bitching i mean the computer's good it's an i5 jesus christ 46 46 70 so many people are so afraid of change it's so With funny 16 me. gigs of ram i enjoy change i enjoy the, the that's OS a 256 gig different. ssd in that thing she bought one oh, i was yeah. like yeah this would be awesome you gotta get this eight, like, 850 okay. evo or 840 evo 840. 850. 850, yeah. Because yeah. she bought it at the same time you did, bought your 520 or 512 or whatever. No, it was actually before. It was gig. like a couple months before I bought mine. But yeah, 500 gigs, which I'm, I'm still always amazed. Like, I have a ton of games installed. And like, you know, like The Division and Grand Theft Auto and a bunch of big games. I look and it's like, oh, you got 250 gigs free i'm like man this is awesome 500 gig ssd for the win it was like well what i bought it was like 100 139 yeah and i got assassin's creed for free it's been on yeah yeah. it's been on sale for the same price a lot lately like around 140 but it doesn't come with a game or anything no but yeah it's still still so worth it to pick up man (laughs) because i'm I'm just amazed at how much free space i have it's like i'm debating on what to do going from a 120 gig to the 500 gig is just like amazing because a lot of things that i read about like doing like 4k video like if you're doing it you're going to do the 4k video and then obviously i'm going to down convert it because i don't have a 4k monitor so i would just put the video in there do my edits and then whenever i export it out i'll export to 1080 and you buy that ram, scale it, ram disc and you're good to go yeah um, but a lot of things that I read about 4K video is that like an SSD for using it as like a scratch disc makes it so much faster and smoother when scrubbing through the footage. And I'm like, fuck. Because like my C drive SSD is like damn near full. And then it's like my other SSD for my games is full. So it's like, oh, buy I don't want to buy. Two five I don't want to buy another freaking SSD. I don't have the money to right now. So just do it. it's only like two hundred and fifty bucks. Just do oh, it. Just only. Yeah. Only two hundred. So you can have one for games, and then one for uh, the scratch disc. No, I thought about using the one one twenty gig just for the scratch disc and putting all my games on the regular hard drive. Just go buy a whole five hundred gig. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, but five. What you do is you buy the one 500 gig and then raid the two and use that as your scratch. So I will never raid. Fast. Why not? I see no <laughs> point in that. I've seen way too many horror stories of people losing shit when they raid. It's just a scratch disc. Who cares? Oh, well, yeah, I know for the scratch disc, but that's overkill. I don't need that. It's no kill like overkill. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. On that bombshell. Um, <laughs> We will see you next week, Wednesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Hopefully, as long as everything goes smooth. And like he said before, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, YouTube. Subscribe on there. Check out the videos, and there'll be more to come in the future. Mm -hmm. Until next time, peace. Peace.